Hi, my name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable three-year-old little boy. On our channel, you'll find simple and tasty recipes using everyday ingredients. Hey guys, so yesterday I went to Kroger just to grab a couple of things like milk and a few other things, and I saw that they have brisket dip. Now, if you have been with our channel for a while, you know how much I love brisket queso from HEB. Um, I normally get it from there all the time. It's like $13 for this exact same size container. And I guess Kroger is trying to compete with HEB in our area. So I found this on clearance for $4.40. I'm not sure how much it would be normally, but I thought it was a steal and worth trying it out. Exact same cooking directions. You can either grill it or bake it in the oven, and that's what I'm gonna do. And you're supposed to bake it with either beer or milk, and I am going to be using some milk. I had these tortilla chips in my pantry, and I picked them up from Walmart. And uh, these are kettle-style corn chips, and they're pretty thick looking. I am going to pop these in the oven too and get them nice and warm and crunchy. But once I get everything heated up, of course, I'll come back and show you how it turns out. Okay guys, so here is our dinner and HEB queso is much, much better. Howard and I tried it, not much to it. You can see it's super watery. It barely has any brisket and I guess all the water came from the pico that's in here and it just will, it's just separated. It will not combine at all. Um, but anyway, the chips are really good. Definitely like the chips. I tried them before I warmed them up in the oven and after. They're definitely better after. They are a really, they are really, really thick. So anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I am going to be using a bunch of stuff from my pantry. The meat I already had in my freezer, but I am going to be using this Korean barbecue uh, bulgogi marinade. Um, so once this meat thaws out, I'm gonna let that marinate for a little while. And um, I am going to be using this fried rice mix, which we really like a lot. You get three little packets in there. I got it from the Asian grocery store, and this I also got from an Asian grocery store too. This I think I just got from the regular grocery store, but I've never tried this sunbird version. Usually I get the Kikkoman hot and sour soup. So we're gonna be trying this tonight. So anyway, let me put everything together and I'll show you our plates. I forgot to mention that I am going to be making these two. I got them on a recent Aldi haul, actually my last Aldi haul, which I will link in the description box, but I wanted you all to see what they look like in the package before I made them. And you can either cook them um, in the microwave or on the stovetop, and I am going to be making mine on the stovetop. Okay, so I've got everything all plated up. So you know how your dinner doesn't quite turn out the way you expect it sometimes? Well, this is that dinner. Um, so the soup, I had to add some soy sauce to it, green onions. It wasn't, I wasn't really crazy about the flavor. It was very vinegary, um, but you know, we're gonna eat it. We had it in the pantry, so we need to eat it. And then here is the pork that I used. Um, that little packet didn't have a lot of flavor to it either. So after it was cooked, I ended up adding this to the skillet and cooking it some more. Um, that made it taste a little bit better. I also added some garlic powder to it. There is the rice right underneath. And then um, these are the dumplings. So Howard and I tried the dumplings. Neither one of us were crazy about them. There is gochujang sauce in the dumplings, and we both like that, but not in this dumpling. It was so strong um, that it wasn't good, and it's not even that it was spicy. It just really didn't have a good flavor. I would definitely not repurchase these again, but I did like the texture of a fresh dumpling as opposed to the frozen dumplings that I typically buy. But anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. 
Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having stuffed Italian sausage. So on the bottom of my casserole dish, I have some sweet mini peppers that I chopped and then also one onion that's also chopped. And then I have five Italian sausage. I just split them down the middle and then stuck some, moz um, not mozzarella, well it is mozzarella, string cheese right in the center. And then I am going to pour this um, pasta sauce right on top and then I'm gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 45 minutes. Okay, so here is everything all plated up. I ended up baking the sausage for about 50 minutes and the last 15 minutes I covered it um, so it could get a little bit more juicy. And I'm serving it with some garlic bread and a Caesar salad kit. And when I've made this sausage before, I normally serve it over pasta, but we're just not doing the pasta tonight, but it is delicious over pasta. But here is the salad kit that we are using, twisted Caesar salad, and it is very good. Howard and I both tasted it. It's a creamy pesto Caesar dressing, shredded parm, and then garlic, um, garlic brioche croutons. And I don't like my croutons whole, so I always crunch them up in the bag before I add them to the salad. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I am making a baked creamy chicken. This recipe was inspired by one that I saw in a cookbook, but I'm just using the gravy portion of the recipe. So in my pan here, I have a package of um, chicken thighs and I season them all over with this poultry blend that I've had forever and it is finally almost gone. I am going to bake this at 400 degrees in the oven for about 40 minutes. Then I'm gonna take it out, drain any juices that are on there, and then I'm going to combine this can of milk and this cream of chicken. Gonna pour it over the chicken and continue to bake it for probably about 20 more minutes. Not sure if I'm gonna bake it covered or uncovered, but we're gonna see how this is gonna turn out. Okay, so I just took the chicken out of the oven and then I um, reserved that broth for another use another day. Here is the cream of chicken and the milk all combined. Just pouring this over the chicken and then I'm gonna pop it back in the oven, uncovered. I decided to do it uncovered for another 20 minutes. Okay, so here is dinner all plated up. It is very good. The chicken's really good. I baked it for an additional 20 minutes and this is how it turned out. Very tasty. Serving it with some fried cabbage and um, rice with the gravy on top. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having breakfast for dinner. So I scrambled some eggs and added American cheese to it. Normally I add cheddar, but I needed to use the slices of American cheese up. And I cooked the eggs in this garlic and herb butter spread. And I also made some sausage in the oven. I had this in my freezer and I got it on clearance as you can see. Um, so that was a really good deal on that Jimmy Dean sausage. And then we are having some buttered toast. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time.